Hi, my name is Kim Foster. I am the author of The Meth Lunches, and today we're going to be making a ratatouille together and answering some questions about the book. Oh, these are such good questions. Okay, so while I'm talking, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to chop some vegetables. Usually when you make a ratatouille, you want to use a mandolin, but I'm too klutzy for that. So I have sort of learned to do all the cutting myself. So by hand. So um, I'm going to do that while I'm telling you about how I first started cooking, uh, which I was a bit of a restaurant writer in New York City for many, many years. And then um, we ended up, I ended up getting married and having kids. And then we basically were getting booted out of restaurants all the time. Uh, so I figured the only way I would have really good food is if I made it myself. And so I just decided to sort of have fun with it and try to get good at it. And the first thing I did was 10 dishes. I learned 10 dishes and like really became expert at them. And that sort of ignited the passion in me. And I really enjoyed cooking. So basically I usually use in this, I usually use uh, green zucchini, uh, a yellow zucchini. Sometimes I use Mexican zucchini, which is like this very light green color. Sometimes people use eggplant. I don't because my kids won't eat it. So um, I try to just get a variety of color. And then you're also going to use Rama tomatoes, which are very inexpensive at the supermarket. And they sort of, they're meaty, so they really hold up when you cook them. So I've always wanted to be a writer and I've always wanted to storytell. And for as long as I can remember, I've wanted to do that. Um, I really wanted to be a horror writer. And um, so everything that I wrote pretty much for the first like two decades of writing was horror. And I really loved it. And but then it became really clear that that was never going to pop for me. <laughs> so I kept that to just doing what I loved. And then as soon as I started cooking, I realized that I could also be writing about food at the same time. And so those two things, just those avenues just sort of came together. And they both involve a big old chef's knife. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's true. I hadn't really thought of that. But I, yeah. I think we're unique because, well, first of all, we have an amazing Chinatown. Not every place in the world has an amazing Chinatown. I mean, you can count on one hand in the United States. Uh, it, makes our, it, it gives us a really, really beautiful foundation for um, a sort of international cuisines and being able to experience lots of different things. We also have amazing fine dining um, foundation as well, strip and even off strip. So Vegas, Las Vegans know good food and they know what good food is and what it isn't. And then we're also so ethnically diverse that, you know, you can't live here and not know Hawaiian food is or Lao food or, you know, like there's so many opportunities to have lots of different kinds of food and have those things be uh, presented to you by people who, um, you know, are cooking from their own experiences and their own, country, their own, you know, ethnicities and nationalities and it's really beautiful to be a part of that and I don't think every city gets to do that. The thing that's really awesome about this dish is that I find it really meditative so I'm I really enjoy just constantly having to slice the vegetables get those really thin cuts I don't try to do chefy things with it or do really fine knife cuts. I just really try to like embrace the sort of rhythm of it. And, um, and this also helps me write because it sort of puts me in this meditative space where I'm just sort of thinking about lots of different things. And a lot of times I'll get an idea or uh, answer a question that I had that I hadn't really thought about before. And it's because I sort of can use cooking as like a meditation. And so they've now sort of go hand in hand with one another, which is really uh, great for my process. Well, one of the things that I've really noticed lately is that we have a lot of development going on. And it's really forced us, I think we're at a crossroads in which we have to ask ourselves what progress is. Um, progress for me might not be progress for somebody who's, um, you know, struggling with poverty and 
um, you know, struggling to put food on the table. And so um, there's, I think we have to be continually asking ourselves what is progress for the people in Las Vegas. And we have a lot of folks who are struggling with poverty and mental illness and addiction. And I'm not sure that a lot of the things that we call progress are for people who are in those um, really challenging situations. And so I think we have to start by reframing and asking much more specific questions about what we can do for the most vulnerable people in our community. Okay, so I'm, I have enough stuff now that I've laid this all out that I'm going to uh, start laying it in the pan, lay, layering it in the pan. And one of the things, this is a cheat of mine. Um, you can make this from scratch, the tomato sauce with like onions and peppers and make it really fancy. Or you can do yourself a favor and just buy a jar of Rayos uh, because it's as close to homemade as you're gonna get in a jar of sauce. So I'm just gonna say this, if you're short of time, is your go-to shortcut. So I just put a little bit in the bottom and I'm gonna start layering in the slices. And I'm just gonna, it's very simple. This is also part of that meditative thing. I'm just grabbing the slices and putting them in and I'm just gonna stand them up like that. And then just keep building and building and then um, until I have sort of a spiral. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, one of the things that I think we think because of our sort of Instagram culture is that things have to be really perfect with food and they have to be like a restaurant or they have to look like they came from a restaurant or the cuts have to be a certain way. And I can tell you that the most important thing is just that you're cooking for somebody and they will appreciate that and it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it's just about providing something special for somebody and doing it with your own hands, which is really its own gift, I think. I think we're very, very focused on food that is pretty, aesthetically pleasing, that it is that it is always about gathering. We're always sitting at the table. We're always connected to each other. It's always a positive experience. But the truth is that food really holds space for the uncomfortable as well as um, the comfortable. Um, it slows us down. It makes us have to sit together. It makes us have to respond to each other where we could ignore each other, um, walk away from each other. Um, and also one of the things that I think about a lot is you know, where we're, we're just not getting together around food in the same way that we used to. And I feel like there are things that are gained and lost by that. So I'm just layering everything in. And this is, again, super meditative. Like just, it's, I'm not gonna, I'm not trying to get someplace. It's slow food in every possible way. And then it doesn't even have to be perfect the way you're layering it in. Like it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be sort of these concentric circles. And I'm going to go all the way around and then do one here and then do like a little, like a little tiny one in the middle. And I'm just going to keep doing this until, um, until I'm done. I think my favorite, um, um, a sort of uh, misconception about food writing that is problematic is that it's not rigorous, uh, that it's not important, that it's frivolous. There's this idea for a long time that everything needed a recipe, every kind of food writing needed a recipe. Um, there's always pressure in food writing to do recipes. Um, and uh, I think that food writing can be much more rigorous than it is, and it can really help us see how people move through communities, how they live their lives. Um, I think there can be um, really a lot of insight in terms of how people are living when we think about the food and what they're eating. And I think that that 
is a misconception that somehow it's always like, it's always fun and exciting and comforting and, oh, I made this beautiful dish for you. And, um, and isn't that nice? And oh, aren't I talented? And, you know, all these things. And that really isn't the crux of food writing at all. I think when food writing is at its best, it's really taking on some very tough topics surrounding food, what we're choosing to eat, who gets to choose their own food. There's a lot of people in our communities that don't even choose their own food. They're getting food that people are giving to them in a box, donating to them or that they're picking up. And um, food writers are really at, at the, uh, they're in the right place to talk about these really serious issues and get a handle on them and help uh, legislators and people in positions of power see what's really happening. And if we don't do that, then it's going to be, um, then we're not doing our jobs. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And you can see it's just the concentric circles. And if you don't have um, the patience for doing them this thin, you can do them a little thicker as well. It's not gonna hurt anything and it'll still look just as pretty. I hit this with, uh, and this is where you can get really creative. Um, like if you like it, if you want, for instance, if it's not a vegetarian or a vegan dish for you, this is just uh, olive oil, um, you can, uh, you can put duck fat in there. You could put, like, you could drizzle it with chicken fat. You can, um, I put a little olive oil and then I'll do like salt and Aleppo pepper and then um, a little bit of Chinese black vinegar, but you can use any kind of vinegar because vinegar just gives it a little bit of a, a tang which is really nice. And I'm just gonna get the Aleppo pepper that's over here. And then when I am gonna put it in the oven for a couple of hours on really low with some parchment paper over the top. You can use aluminum foil if you want to. You don't wanna roast the vegetables. It's gonna be a low oven, about 300, and they're just going to steam in that parchment. That's the way Thomas Keller wants you to do it. But you can also just roast this for an hour if you really, really want to. No one's gonna say anything. I just made a little, um, a little condiment with like garlic and onions and um, dandelion greens. Dandelion greens are a little bitter. And when this comes out, I'll probably hit the top of it with a little bit of that, just gives it like a little hit. And then I'll also take my lemons and do a little zest on top, like a whole lemon. I like a lot of zest on it. And then just that'll give it like a little hit of acid. It'll be really, really nice. So you're gonna put this in the oven with parchment. So the whole thing about the movie is that you take this out and I'm not gonna do exactly the flourish they do, but they do this basically a flourish so that it's like this, like that, and then and then you want a little bit of that on there. And if you wanna get a little fancy, I like to put a little crispy fried onions on top just so we have a little bit of crunch. All right, wanna try? Thank you, we're ready. All right, this okay. looks so good. Okay. So this is that moment on like the TV show yeah. where in like the morning show where you have to eat it and then you have to like it no matter what. Yeah, no okay, matter you're what. On. You're oh, on. Okay. Okay, ready? <laughs> what do you think of my concoction that I made? No, this this is truly good. Oh, see. Truly good. He had to yeah. say that. I paid him to say that. No, I'm so happy to be here. This was really fun. Do you have more questions or? No. No, oh, good. Excellent. We're done. Perfect. And cut. Is a hot dog a sandwich? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a hot dog. <laughs> Is this something that you guys just like sit around and talk about in the BMI offices? You know, like, is a hot dog a sandwich? Is it, you know, what is it exactly? The bun throws me though. For me, it's the bun. It's oblong. It's, and then you, 
Yeah, no, it's not a sandwich. 